Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And nah, breaking down a bite-sized piece. So today we got some pretty major news as Visa pilots crypto settlement. So what is going on is that they are going to be integrating into the USDC stablecoin on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So we'll take a look at why this is so big as far as they are bypassing banks in general, what USDC is, what Visa actually does and is, and finally we'll take a look at the dark horse which is how USDC could actually be run and is run on Stellar. So we'll take a look at that on top of what I think is a bigger story Americans are concerned about rising inflation, prices for goods are soaring. And I'm going to talk to you about a personal experience and why I believe that when inflation starts to really take off, we're going to see a massive influx into cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 30th, I think, March 29th, 30th, somewhere around there. I'm in Puerto Rico today. It is uh, 5 p.m., uh, I guess, Puerto Rican time. And uh, that is what is going on. So... Uh, we've been here for just a couple of days or so. We did a video yesterday with uh, Alex Masioli and Ryan Gorman <clears throat> take a look at what's going on in the markets and uh, pretty great place. Uh, we're just down here to uh, take a look at certain things and, you know, who knows, might even move here at some point. But this is what is going on in the market. So it's a fantastic day. News of this really sparked an uh, incredible massive influx uh, as far as price action goes. And we are at 1.82 trillion. And I think, uh, you know, 2 trillion uh, flat is right around the corner, which is great news. So uh, let's take a look at the most bullish coins. Obviously, USDC makes total, total sense. Everybody is tweeting about it, talking about it, everything else. Wan Chain, Comp, OMG, and of course, Ethereum, because of what we just talked about. What I think is uh, interesting is that uh, no one is really talking about the whole Stellar connection as far as USDC, because it can run on that, which make a lot more sense for the millions of transactions. Um, we'll get into that in a second, but we have that, and then the most bearish coins, AGI, AVEX, GO, BOW, and E-GOLD. So that is uh, essentially what is happening uh, in the market. Let's take a look at the uh, specific prices real quick. Bitcoin, 57.3. And if you take a look at this, which is, let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. What's interesting about this is that Bitcoin is at 57,323, yet we're almost at a uh, pretty fantastic uh, market cap of uh, almost an all-time high. So what's going on? Well, everything is flowing into these altcoins. You see a lot of different uh, projects outside of the top 100 that a lot of investors are getting into because they know the massive gains that are out there. So like I've always said, uh, once Bitcoin hit 30,000, I stopped all the cost averaging in. There's no point in it for me. I think it's gonna go back down to that after it hit 150K. Ethereum, me personally, I haven't been uh, buying it up for quite some time. I think passed around 13 or 1400 because I started to take profits. I don't think it can really go up. I thought I could hit 10K. This, this uh, bull run, I think if we get to 6K, it'll be good and uh, we'll go from there. So I don't know, but um, uh, the other ones I'm putting a little bit more money into, uh, which would be things like Voyager, things like uh, Cardano. I'll take a look at StormX and buying that every single day because uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty small cap and it could do pretty well. So what else we have? Uh, tethers, Tether, nobody really cares. Polkadot, uh, still doing pretty good. Actually, everything's really going pretty good uh, around the horn. Uh, Theta Token still uh, up a little bit. Uh, $13, amazing. I remember when Theta was like a quarter. 28.12 for Chainlink, same thing. USDC coin up there at 12. And then, of course, Tether's still sitting at the number four spot. I wonder what's going to happen after this announcement. Anyhow, let's take a look at what's going on uh, in actually uh, today's top story. So... This little article is what really drove the price today, as I think everybody is talking about. They're telling you, you know, what's going on. And that's, that's great. I mean, this is a, a big catalyst. So what exactly happened is, as part of a pilot program, Visa is using USD coin to settle transactions over Ethereum. Great. With the help of the Crypto.com platform, sounds pretty good, and Anchorage, a digital asset bank, these are the three are the two things that they're using. Visa will offer the service to more partners later this year. Jack Forrestal, Visa's chief product officer, so the firm's move is partly an effort to serve financial tech companies. And that's pretty much the whole story. So this really hasn't rolled out, but they made an official announcement, which is uh, always uh, good to see. And they're going to actually progress into moving forward with uh, USDC as far as settlement uh, for their millions of merchants. So that's great. But the real question is, why is this so big? Uh, obviously, it's big because it brings people into the cryptocurrency world, right? 
But this is from uh, Jeremy Allaire. Allaire, I don't know how to say his last name, but uh, he is, uh, I believe he's the CEO of uh, USDC, or no, Circle, excuse me, but which is yeah with USDC. And he just lays it out like this. He goes, this is why this is so important. So for Visa, this means that they get the money as fast as blockchain moves. So instead of having to settle through banks, and everybody thinks that, that Visa is super fast with their transactions per second, and there is final settlement instantly, that's not the case. Actually, it, do, it can take hours to days. So these things that are happening, people always talk about, well, the uh, traditional uh, world is so much faster. Are you out of your mind? Have you ever tried to transfer any kind of money using Swift? That is slow. Visa still has a great messaging service, but final settlement, still takes quite a long time. So to move funds without reversal risk, without the time delays and costs of Swiss, SWIFT, ACH, et cetera, and this is huge. And essentially what they're doing now is just going, hey, all the traditional finance systems that we have in place, all the ones that the banks are using that we've uh, had to rely on for quite some time, we're going to totally bypass that and we're just going to use blockchain. So the faster that a blockchain moves and the more inexpensive it can be, the better it is for Visa. So when I saw this, I'm like, why in the world did they use Ethereum? Because right now, we all know it's slow and it is super expensive. The fees are outrageous. And then there was a there was a statistic that was quoted by Kim.com and he talks about how 50% uh, of the transactions globally are $10 and under. So if you're using a transaction that's $10 and under and trying to use the Ethereum network, I think you got a long way to go and I don't think it's gonna work out too hot. So it leads me to two conclusions. One, Either there is some type of layer two solution that is just gonna knock our socks off with Ethereum and drop the drop the gas fees down to like nothing and it's gonna be super fast, which I, I gotta tell you, I don't really think that's gonna happen anytime soon, uh, even with what was happening in, in the past and their, the, the layer two solutions that actually uh, were uh, delayed. Or what could potentially, that this means is that they are going to, they wanna use USDC, Visa wants to use USDC, even though it's an ERC-20 token, they're like, yeah, but we won't use it on their blockchains like a Stellar. I'll get to that in a second. So real quick, this is what USDC is. It is a stable coin, 11 billion in circulation. It's on uh, transport on chain, 555 billion, which is quite a bit of numbers. And uh, it just is pretty much a, it's a stable coin. There's nothing really sexy about it. That's just what it is. However, it's being accepted more and more places. I use it all the time in Voyager. Uh, I like to use it. Unfortunately, since it's an ERC-20 token, it still has those fees and it is still slow. I tried to transfer it uh, over to uh, a friend of mine. It took, took a long time and again, the fees were, were pricey. So I'm like, well, this sucks. So even though Tether is Tether, it is that is also an ERC-20 token. So again, they're plagued with the same problems. It makes me wonder though, if you're trying to have world dominance, then why build everything on Ethereum right now? Because you're kind of tailed in and in that. I guess it was the best thing at the time. So uh, we'll see. I mean, could... The Ethereum do it? Sure, but it's got a long way to go. So let me take a look at Visa and actually what Visa is. So just so you know, uh, this is why this news is so important. First of all, they have 3 billion cards worldwide. There's 46 million merchant locations. So imagine this. This just opens up uh, the entire crypto world to all these merchants. So they can, yes, they're going to settle in USDC, but how far away are they potentially from uh, introducing something else? Because Stable coins are kind of like the gateway. Once you have a USDC, a Tether, or whatever the stable coin that you want to use, you can buy any kind of cryptocurrency that's in that that's within the ecosystem itself. And that's why Tether was such a mainstay. Also, uh, you got 65,000 transactions per second, messages per second, TPS is pretty high. And uh, the volume is 11 trillion total volume. I think that's uh, that's per year. It's like uh, on a daily basis. So you can see why this is such a big deal for USDC now being implemented into Visa. But we knew this was gonna happen. So again, the question is, why Ethereum? So I thought it was a layer two solution because these are things that people are always talking about, but this was just delayed uh, until July. This was um, optimism. Then postponed until at least until July and uh, opening mainnet to the public is something we cannot do alone, said optimism. It will be a collaborative effort between us, projects and core infrastructure providers. Uh, they are doing these things called uh, optimistic roll-up based Ethereum scaling solution. And it aims to increase Ethereum's uh, throughput or the transactions per second uh, and reduce its gas fees. Great, we all want that. Well, first of all, who's gonna use it and how does it work? Well, Uniswap said it targets an L1 Ethereum mainnet launch of its version three 
on May 5th, and L2 deployment optimism will follow shortly after. So that's great. Again, dropping the fees, making it faster. Optimism was known as Plasma. I think if you remember those for the OGs out there. And it's, uh, it's pioneered optimistic rollups. And this provides scaling by bundling or rolling up transactions into a single transaction. So instead of having like three to 10 or individual transactions, they just roll them all together, then shoot them across the network. And then that will uh, increase it because they're all bundled. And of course, the fees hopefully will go down. Hopefully. The transaction received by the main Ether Ethereum blockchain, but it's executed on a layer two solution. It's then uh, sent back to Ethereum, and of course, it's, uh, it helps uh, with everything like we just talked about, and it doesn't sacrifice security. So this is the big thing. Now, again, so this sounds great. Again, this is if this happens in July, it's already been delayed, and let's say it does hit in July and there's no hiccups. Well, great, but what if it does? And who knows how much the gas fees will go down? I will just say this. Like, if you're going to purchase something for $10 and uh, you have to use uh, USDC, even if you have these roll-ups, it's still going to be expensive, even if you had to pay, like, a dollar or 50 cents or whatever else is. People are like, I don't want to, you know, that's, that shouldn't be how it is. So this is why I think this is a bigger deal, because USDC has been live on the Stellar Network <clears throat> since February 2nd, 2021. So if everybody has forgotten this, this is what is going on. Stellar, if you've never used Stellar, uh, it's super fast and it is super cheap. And I just don't understand why people don't adopt it more and more. I think part of the reason is, is because it's so closely tied and related to XRP. XRP is going through uh, that litigation process uh, for the, um, the SEC. So in that situation, maybe a lot of companies are like, you know what, we like what you guys are doing. We like how fast it is, how cheap it is. But let's see what happens with the SEC because if XRP gets deemed a security, then maybe this could flow over to that. I mean, it's just a, one of those thoughts that I have. But uh, again, if USDC can be on, it can be on the Ethereum mainnet or the blockchain, and it can use Stellar at any time that it wants to, flip a switch, whatever you want to say, then why wouldn't they just use that? And I think it'd be a win-win for everybody. Anyhow, that's what we have in that situation. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, um, this is a big story. And I think it's a, it's a bigger story than what people are really covering. And uh, it's inflation. And it talks about how Americans are concerned about rising inflation. Prices are goods, poor goods are soaring. And I will just say this. When we go through this article, it's going to talk about, you know, uh, the media has pretty much been, you know, bypassing it, just kind of like laying it to the wayside. And there's a lot of more people out there, you probably yourself included, which is probably why you're here. You are thinking to yourself, if there's so much inflation and there's so much quantitative easing and there's so much money printing, which all the money that's going into circulation, which dilutes the actual spending power of the dollar, that means that everything else is going to go up. So what can I do? How can I hedge my bet? I think that's why a lot more people have been getting into crypto and digital assets. And when I talk about the story, you're gonna see just how quickly this can actually happen. I forgot the quote, but, uh, or who actually quoted it, but it says, it's, it starts off slowly, then quickly. And it's the same thing like, with like being broke. <laughs> it starts off slowly, and then all of a sudden, you're broke. And it's the same thing with inflation. I think you can start off slowly, and then all of a sudden, hyperinflation. Now, do I think it's gonna happen? I don't. I don't know, I'm not an economist, but uh, it does scare me, especially with some of the things that I've seen. So this article just talks about how they, they, they got a direct, direct quote from an Atlanta Fed president, Rafael Bostic, and he said that he would not be concerned if inflation rises above 2% or even 2.4, if prices are firm and not volatile. Well, I'll go with that. At least it's not uh, too crazy. Cleveland Fed president Charles Evans told the public that increased inflation is welcomed. And two flow inflation is no good. Sure, two flow inflation. I guess uh, uh, the, the the opposite of that would be even worse. This is where it gets interesting. Meanwhile, the mainstream media publications have been telling U.S. residents not to worry too much about inflation, and it called the theories meme economics, which is uh, I don't think that every single uh, mass media publication is really just saying it's just meme economics. I think there's some. I'm pretty sure that there are some different uh, outlets that are covering this adequately. But for the story, this is what they're talking about. But I will just say this. I don't think people are very stupid. They can look around and look at the prices and go, wow, that's going up and that's going up and that's going up. And guess what? 
I haven't gotten a race. Nothing really going on here. I don't, I mean, I have gotten this, this fantastic stimulus money, but the stimulus money that I get, guess what? Everything else has just increased in price. So what did you really do for me? I mean, you helped me out temporarily, but in the long run, how good is this going to be? And uh, it says, there was a survey that was done. It says 77% of U.S. residents are worried about rising inflation. And this is across all different age, ages and genders. So 18 and 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 54, and so on and so forth. And then lastly, I don't know, use this. there's two things. First of all, if you look at Google Trends and you just type in the word inflation, right now, inflation, because it, it won't give you an exact number of search volume, but it will tell you on a spectrum of 0 to 100 how much this is being uh, searched for. And I went all the way back to 2004. And as of March 2021, it is the most searched term right now uh, since 2004. So that is on the, the forefront of everybody's mind about inflation, about what is going on, because they can see it and they're not stupid and it makes total sense. So there is that part. And then there's these little snippets of information where people are saying, like this was from Bruce Fenton. And, then, and actually, I heard this on Max Kaiser's show. He says, uh, this, this guy says, our local lumber yard prices have risen so fast lately that we can't quote accurately. We have now moved to weekly price quotes. If you're a builder and need an estimate for your customer, that lumber estimate is now only good for a week. Sorry. And then, you know, off it goes. So pretty amazing, right? I can remember when prices didn't fluctuate that much to where they would say, look, it's only good for a week. And then after that, you know, it's going to go up. So uh, don't quote anybody any prices. So that puts a lot of strain on other people. Same thing with us. Uh, I was talking to Jose. He was our contractor for the investment property. And we wanted to uh, redo the entire uh, bathrooms and kitchens. And he said, sure. He goes, we can do it. And he gave us a, gave us a quote. And he says, I'll just tell you right now that when I go to Home Depot to get these, these different supplies, that every day in the morning, uh, as a contractor, when I go in, there are people responsible. The only job they have is to increase the prices of all these different items that are in there. And he says, it, before it wasn't that many, it was just a little bit, and then they'd restock. And he goes, lately? He goes, I've seen it go up drastically. He goes, so if you guys want to do this, the best time would be to do this now to get the supplies, because if not, I have to, I have to uh, work this into the numbers, and just gonna be that much more. So. Even me, I can see it. And I'm sure out there, even you can see it. Not just on like, uh, you know, uh, construction supplies, but on food items, perishables, maybe even medications, everything's going up. So again, when I look at crypto and digital assets and I see that, okay, I have my bank account and I have X amount in there, I'm like, what do I do with this? Because all I'm doing is just having money in there that's really just depreciating. So why would I keep it in there? Gotta make it work for me. And that's why I put in the different assets. Anyhow. So that's it for today. So look, if you found value in that video, uh, thanks. I appreciate it and uh, sticking with me. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It always helps the channel tremendously. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching the end. I appreciate it and I'll see you on the